All right, we want to graph square root functions. We should be familiar with the parent function, y equals the square root of x. Uh, it's going to be half a parabola opening to the right. Um, it starts at 0, 0 and works its way up. We can plug in a few points if we want. We choose our points wisely, so zero, uh, the square root of 0 is 0. Uh, we can choose 1. So we, we choose things that will give us perfect squares. So we can put 1 in here. The square root of 1 is 1. Uh, we shouldn't put 2 or 3, but we can put 4 because the square root of 4 is 2. And we could put 9, although it doesn't show up on our graph that's written here. But the square root of 9 is 3, so we have 0, 0. So I'm just going to graph these points. 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. They would hang out about here somewhere. Half a parabola, opening to the right, should have hit those points a little bit better. But there's the graph of that. That is the parent function. And so for 28, it's really our parent function, but it shifted a little bit. And we know that when we subtract something in here, this is going to be right 4. So this concept of uh, adding or subtracting within the function and outside the function holds true for all of our different functions. We did this once already with... Uh, our parabolas, and this one's going to be up 3. And so really we're taking this whole graph, we're shifting it right 4 and up 3. So it's going to be there. And we could, might know the shape, we could plug in points again. Um, we want perfect squares in here, so if we plug in uh, 5, we'll get 5 minus 4 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1 plus 3 is 4. So we have the point 5, 4. And maybe if we could get a 4 in here, that would be good. So what value of x would give us a 4 in the square root? Well, 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So we have the point 8, 5 fairly on our graph here. And so we have our starting point, and we go up and through these other two points. And there's that graph. And then moving on to solving equations with radicals. Remember to check for extraneous solutions. This happens when you square both sides. So remember the idea for this is we want to isolate the radical, uh, which means get it by itself on a side, which in both cases they're like that already. If they weren't, if there was like a plus 7 outside here, we would want to subtract 7 first. But there's not. So... Um, just write this real quick. First, we start by isolating the variable uh, radical. And then once we do that, we square both sides. And then we solve. So it's already isolated, so that's finished. We square both sides. That's why we have to use extra, uh, check for extraneous solutions, because sometimes you can get solutions that don't work uh, when you square both sides. So we square both sides because it will cancel the square root. So we just have x plus 9. One, uh, 10 squared is 100. Subtracting 9 from both sides gives us 91. So x equals 91 seems to be the answer. Let's plug it back in. 91 plus 9 is 100. The square root of 100 is 10, so this answer works. Coming over to 30, it's going to be a little bit different because we have a variable here on the right, but we still follow the same process. Isolate the radical. It is isolated already. Square both sides. So we're going to square both sides here. On the left, square root and squared cancel, so you're left with six, six, uh, 17 minus x. Over here, please multiply this correctly. Remember, this just means x minus 5 times x minus 5. There is a special pattern for this, um, but we can multiply it out. We've got x squared. I'm going to do 2 here. We've got a negative 5x and then another negative 5x, which is negative 10x. And then uh, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. And we're left with a quadratic equation here. So when solving a quadratic, the easiest thing to do is solving by factoring. If we can, and to do that, we get everything on one side. Uh, so we subtract 17 from both sides and add x to both sides. And then after we do that, we see if we can factor.
So we got a 0 here on the left x squared minus 9x plus 8. It does look like it's going to factor nicely for us. We've got x and x. We have a positive 8 and a negative here, so we need two negatives. And we're going to do 1 and 8, which means x equals the opposite, or what makes this 0, and that's 1. And what value makes this equal 0, that's 8. We do have to check for extraneous solutions, so we plug back in, putting in 1. So we're going to check. Um, we're going to check x equals 1. Uh, we got the square root of 17 minus 1. And we're checking, does that equal 1 minus 5? 17 minus 1 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Those are not equal, so 1 does not work. Now we're going to try checking x equal to 8. It's the square root of 17 minus 8, and we're checking does that equal 8 minus 5. 17 minus 8 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. It works. So our answer is x equals 8.